over at our booth, we're joined by one of our neighbors back from the Bay Area, Christine Kwan. Thanks for dropping by the show. It's so good to see you again, Scott. And besides being an exemplary diabetes educator, Christine has informed me she's had diabetes for 50 years. Just about. Congratulations. Thank you. Yeah, thanks for coming over. So, so many things I want to ask you. Uh, first of all, how long have you been in diabetes education? Since the advent of the first core curriculum. So that's about 20 some odd years ago. It's a great organization to belong to. So be sure you volunteer at your local chapters. You'll meet a lot of great educators that are very inspiring. Do you think the viewers of our show could volunteer for the AADE? Certainly. How would they go about doing that? You can go on the website. Um, I only know the local website, but you can catch the link for AADE by visiting our local le website in the Bay Area, diabetesed.org. Okay. And there are links that lead you to AADE's websites. That's a great idea. It's just people to get involved, they'd learn, they'd be able to help people. Correct. So what's your specialty in diabetes? My specialty is nutrition. I cover anywhere from pediatric, prenatal counseling, type 1, type 2, I guess type 1 and a half. So it used to be called MODI, maturity onset in diabetes, yes. um, to gerontology. Um, and you advise them all what to eat? In coordination with medication as well as blood sugar monitoring. What are the biggest challenges out there with that? Um, probably the biggest challenge, as we all know, is an epidemic and type 2 diabetes in children. Um, about 25 years ago, in certain populations in the Bay Area, we did have a few kids with type 2 diabetes, but now it's about 50% of our pediatric population. In 50%? The 50%? That's, that's scary. Correct. So, as we all know, CDC statistics, one out of three kids born in the year 2000 will develop diabetes sometime in their lifetime. I know it's a big challenge. What's working? What are you trying that's working for kids to lose the weight and 10, push away? 10,000 steps, the pedometer works really well. 10,000 steps with the pedometer? And I know that the Oakland School District, as well as LA School District, they have banned the use of soda pop in vending machines. Great. That really helps. So they're trying to improve the school lunch program. Mm -hmm. Kaiser does also have a program. I work for Kaiser Permanente in, in Altabate Summit, World Diabetes Center. So Kaiser Permanente has developed a program for kids on healthy eating. Mm -hmm. um, I've also been involved with Tavis Smiley. With what? Tavis Smiley is Road to Health. So this is um, a program to let African Americans know about the risk for developing diabetes, high blood pressure, and heart disease. Okay. What other projects are you excited about? Just being the SF Babe webmaster, <laughs> check out our local, um, again, at diabetes.ed.org. I'm okay. also publishing an article for Paddock on diabetes and celiac disease. Because I've noticed recently that I've had a lot of patients who felt quite overwhelmed by the diagnosis of type 1 diabetes as well as celiac disease. Which is the wheat allergy. Correct. No wheat, rye, and possibly oats. So you put diets together so they can not feel too uh, neglected? Correct. And give up those things? And one must keep it in mind that you have to provide nutritional information based on um, their individual needs, other metabolic diseases and or cultural needs. All the different cultures. Of course, San Francisco Bay Area, you have so many different cultures. And food is so part of the culture. It must be a challenge. Correct. And I started out with one language. I can say, probably give a diet instructions in most of four languages now. Which ones? Je parle un peu de français. In French, okay. Cantonese. Cantonese. And I could understand a little bit of Spanish because it sounds like French. <laughs> okay, and of course English. So sometimes I wonder. <laughs> with your own 50 years, uh, what what tips can you give people? I mean, you're in great shape. You're slim. When I was diagnosed over 50 years ago, um, the prognosis is not very good. Now with glucose monitoring more scientific research, there's a lot of hope for all of us. I have no retinopathy, I don't have any problems with my kidneys, 
etc. Knock on wood. Right, so Either. far. Yeah. Congratulations. <laughs> <laughs> See, so it pays off. So try the best you can. Yeah. And do you have patients on the low carbohydrate diet? It depends on medications they're taking. Mm -hmm. um, our pregnant women, unfortunately, cannot be on a low carbohydrate diet. Should I go into explanations? No. Okay. That's good. Okay. Because the ketone bodies. Yeah. I know some people it works for them just to eat half as much as they used to, and other people it works to cut back on the carbs and their blood sugars come in line. Correct. So the plate method for all of you educators is simply taking a plate, dividing it in half, the larger portion of the plate, mainly vegetables, um, the other fourth of the plate, the palm of your hand for protein serving, and about your fist for carbohydrate serving. But the funny thing is that, you can tell I'm Asian American, we use the bowl method. <laughs> and what's the bowl method? You fill the bowl halfway with vegetables and then some no, protein? No, what you do is you take a Japanese rice bowl, not udon bowl, which is quite but, large. But one like this. Right, because okay. a Chinese rice bowl is a lot larger than is Japanese this? <laughs> rice bowl. Right, exactly. You put your starch there and all the vegetables you can possibly eat. And then meat, chicken, and fish has little effect upon blood sugar rise. Well, Christine, it's great to see a face from home. Thank Thanks you. for coming to visit us at the show. It's always uh, great to see you. Uh, it's, I'm glad to hear about the kids and they're going.